And welcome back to part 125. This is going to be the last part we do before heading off to the final area of the game. So now that we got all the heart pieces in all the areas of the game, uh, except for Icana Canyon, it is time to, obviously, head off to Icana Canyon. I'm not going to make that same lame pun as I made twice already in this playthrough. I can't, I can't believe I resisted the urge to make the pun. Ha ha. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to catch some fairies on my way here, because I might need one or two fairies in order to beat the last area. Unlike most Zelda games, the final boss of this game is actually somewhat climactic. Not too difficult, but still difficult enough to not be, like, really disappointing, like some of the final bosses I can mention. <clears throat> So anyway, our last two heart pieces that we're going to be getting in Icanny Canyon. Um, the first one is up here in Icanny Vill Village itself. If you recognize this guy from Ocarina of Time, he was the one who sold... Uh, he was the one that you had to sell the big pose to. In this game, instead of, selling the, instead of you selling the big pose to him, instead uh, he takes some of your rupees and asks you to save some wandering spirits uh, by killing some big pose. Which is an interesting interpretation of saving a spirit. But I'm not going to argue with him. And if your health drops below three hearts, he will pull you out of the battle. Pull you out of the battle. So, uh, he at least has some mercy, right? Uh, so yeah. They're not exactly big pose in the same sense that they were in Ocarina of Time. Instead, it's just the four pose that were in the forest temple in that game. Um, whoa. So, yeah, they even have the same name and everything. And for some reason, the game won't let me take off my bunny hood right now. I have no idea why. But, uh, I guess this whole fight is gonna be played out like some sort of Easter fable. I have no idea why the game won't let me take that off. It's really annoying. Oh well. And... Yeah. I'm using the Great Fairy Sword here. It's maybe not the best idea because... You know, uh, when these guys spin around, the kind of half the idea is to uh, shield against them, which you can't do while holding the Great Fairy Sword. And they aren't guys, to be fair. They're post sisters, but you know what I mean. You, they are taken out in essentially the exact same manner as they were in Ocarina of Time. Jeez. Yep, even if your shield is actually facing them, whenever you have the Great Fairy Sword, your shield just flat out doesn't do anything, so, uh, don't even bother. <laughs> I like that this one's a bit of a coward, he likes to run away. <laughs> she, rather. She, she, she. Ah, oh, jeez. Generally, I would, I would recommend using the Great Fairy Sword and then quickly tapping B to switch back to the other sword so that you can use your shield. You can also put away the sword by, uh, you know, by stopping and pressing A, but that takes too much time. So yeah, uh, these are the same as in Ocarina of Time. Basically, there's four of them, and whenever they first appear, you're supposed to check which one spins. The one that spun was off camera, though, so I wasn't sure whenever I was doing this. Uh, that, see, that one spun, so that's the real one. Uh, so then you just shoot that one, you just keep doing that, basically, until you win. Not much to it. Uh, it might be more effective to use elemental arrows, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> I am starting to run out of time, though. Uh, I didn't see which one spun. There we go, it's that one. Hooray. All right, their souls have been healed, apparently. <laughs> and there we go. Somehow this person knows that our name is Fagballs. Because he can read people's hearts. And he knew we would be coming here. Hmm. And now we've healed his soul as well. So he vanishes. Hmm. Well, at least we didn't have to play the song of healing this time, right? 
Yeah. So, yeah, now I can actually take my bunny hood off, but I don't want to because I still have more running to do. I really have no idea why I wasn't able to take it off in that battle. That was quite annoying. So, uh, the last heart piece that you can get without heading off to the fifth area of the game is over here. Um, the Icana Canyon, obviously, is full of water. It's a river. If you go right, there's a, it drops you off into a waterfall, which brings you back to the southern swamp. And if you go left, uh, there's another waterfall, but instead of falling down it, it's, you know... It's uh, at another vertical orientation. I don't know how to phrase that. But anyway, if you go this way, there's another piece of heart waiting for you. Uh, and it's just down this hole over here. Unfortunately, it's not hidden behind the waterfall, which would have been a cool placement, but oh well. Uh, oh, it's not this hole, actually. It's the wrong hole entirely. There's something in this hole, then. Oh, hooray, bomb shoes. I think, I think in my second playthrough through this game, I never bothered to buy the bomb shoes, and I think that was the, my first time that I got bomb shoes, so it played like the jingle and everything, like dun 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 dun, which was funny. Okay, so the heart piece is actually behind the waterfall. <laughs> um, but of course, there is, uh, you don't just get the heart piece, you need to actually go through this little mini dungeon, which is uh, a little bit more exciting than just them, you know, just leaving it there. That would have been boring, right? I'm not really sure what that pattern on the door is supposed to be. It's very weird. And yeah, there's a bunch of rupees up here. I assume if you plant a, if you plant beans there and water it, uh, the bean sprout will probably carry you around and let you grab all the rupees. No real need for it, though. We're not uh, itching for money or anything. Uh, I am curious to see what the uh, bugs will give you if I drop them in the soft soil. Though. That might be interesting. Who knows, right? We're nearing the end of this playthrough. We might as well stop and smell the roses. Or stop and get bugs to do our bidding. Why not? And we got five rupees. Yes! That was so worth it! Yee hee 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 hee. Hmm. So, I don't know if this is supposed to be the same person. He has the same model, more or less. It looks like the same model to me. Um, yeah, some guy in a hood with a clown nose, it looks like. Uh, and he wants us to heal some more spirits. And he more or less has the same motivation as the other guy, who wants us to heal spirits by killing some pose. This guy wants us to heal spirits by... doing this. Refighting old mini bosses, <laughs> which I'm sure is exciting uh, to watch. Of course, now that we have the great fairy sword, these guys are, for the most part, pushovers. Let's see if I can kill these. And in... oh yeah, I did kill them in one hit. That was that was rocking. That would have timed that right. I could have killed all three with one slice. That would have been friggin' cool. Uh, I'm not sure what's in that chest. I think it's just rupees or something. Nothing too important. Yeah. Kind of a token reward on Nintendo's part, since I think by this point in the game you don't... I don't think anyone is really itching for money at this point in the game. And it's not really worthwhile to come here and grind money when you can easily just grab all the rupees that are in Clock Town and kill Tackery, but... You know, it's the thought that counts, right? That's what my grandma used to say. And here we go, fighting the friggin' Wizrobe for what is hopefully the last time in the game. I think the, la <laughs> I think the last time we fought him, I said it was going to be the last time, but uh, I was wrong, apparently. I forgot about this one. He's a bit of a pushover. He's even easier here than he was in uh, the Stone Tower Temple, actually. Which is weird, because you need to get the light arrows to enter this area, so you'd think that they would make him harder. But, oh well. Not much of a challenge. Same exact strategy as usual. Really not much to say in this part, we're just fighting a bunch of bosses that we fought before. The only real upside is we have the Great Fairy Sword now, so they're a little bit easier. But not by too much, really. Still, it's better than another goddamn minigame, right? I know, I'm sick of minigames. I like them, but it's rather tedious to go through and complete whole bunch of them in one big part. 
I'm gonna assume this is more rupees. And it is more rupees, so... Now that we've filled our wallet, and yes, that is the biggest wallet you can get in this game. I had a comment of someone telling me that you could get a bigger wallet, but that is not true. 500 is the biggest. They didn't make them bigger until Wind Waker. Um, which makes sense, because Wind Waker takes place, you know, hundreds of years after this game, so it makes sense that inflation would have made it so you need more rupees, but that's overthinking things. I'm just being a nerd there. Anyway, here we go fighting this guy once again. Uh, unfortunately, the Great Fairy Sword doesn't really help a great deal with this guy. He's still pretty much just as big of a pain in the ass as he was before. Boy. I'll try spinning with the Great Fairy Sword. It is a little longer, so maybe that'll help out a little bit, but... For the most part, this guy's just really irritating. We have, so, we have so many hearts now that we can pretty much just stand right underneath them and kill all this frog spawn the old-fashioned way. Like a man. You know what boss I always kind of miss, who I always thought was overrated, or underrated, I mean, is, um... What was his name? Started with a B. The boss of the uh, inside Jabu Jabu's belly from uh, Ocarina of Time. A lot of people seem to hate that boss because it's, I don't know, I guess it has a lot of luck-based things or something. I keep hearing that it's based on luck and it's not based on skill and it's bad, but I don't know. I always thought that boss was really had a really cool design and was a lot of fun to fight, so uh, I don't know. That has nothing to do with anything. I just kind of wanted to talk. <laughs> I don't know. I always liked that boss. What was his name again? This is bur bur barricade. Barret was it? I don't know. It started with a B. It was Barra something something. I don't know. Some sort of pun on Barracuda, maybe. Eh, whatever. I almost had a magic near actually. This is rather tedious. There we go. Well, almost. Uh, you don't have to kill this frog spawn, but I like to kill it anyway because I find it highly annoying bouncing all around, doing minimal damage, like a dick. Stop that. Alright. Whoa. And as before, once once you're down to just the head, um, it's pretty much down to target practice, thankfully. I'm gonna kill this guy. There we go. Wow. So, whoop. Yeah, it, it seems like he has uh, quite a hard time hitting you when you're in the corner, so you might as well just stay in the corner and uh, attempt to hit him. I don't know. Oh, what the hell? Wow. We appear to have... Whoa, okay. I was going to say we glitched the game, but he, got, he managed to get out of it. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> Three cheers for uh, Majora's Mask AI, right? <laughs> and there we go. Probably the most tedious mini boss to refight, since even with superior weapons, he still takes forever to fight off. I mean, and we're almost out of magic. I'm hoping some of this grass is going to give us more magic. Uh, whatever. There are there were pots back in this room, so we can get some magic from those probably. I hope so, Frig. Hey. Uh. All this work just for a single solitary heart beast, right? Can I hit the pot? There we go. Jeez. My aim is pretty atrocious in the Zora form sometimes. Not a big fan of fighting with any form, really. Hey, a fairy. I think that's the first time I've seen a fairy underwater. I'm probably wrong though. It probably happens constantly and I just and I'm just an idiot, who knows. There we go. We got a fairy in water. Cool. I'm imagining that must be really weird to have a bottle that's full of water plus a fairy. A little aquatic fairy. 
So it's this guy again. I'm not going to keep on the Zora mask because the Zora is very susceptible to fire. It's not a good idea to have the Zora mask on. Or the Deku mask for that, for that uh, reason. Same reason. By the way, don't know if I uh, said this yet, but uh, when you're wearing the bunny hood, it does not affect your speed while you're Zed targeting. <laughs> I know I keep wearing it while Zed targeting in this game, and I said earlier that I wasn't sure whether or not it did affect, and uh, it doesn't, so... I still tend to wear it anyway, because as soon as you drop the Zed button, it's nice to be able to run around quickly, but... Other than that, I'm, main I'm mainly just making all the battles a little harder to take seriously. <laughs> So yeah, the downside of using the Great Fairy Sword on this guy is that he attacks right after you attack him. And since you don't have a shield of the Great Fairy Sword, I tend to get hit after every single attack. But I have so many hearts that it doesn't really matter. I'd rather use the Great Fairy Sword and get the battle done with, right? And there we go. Piece of cake. And there's more rupees, probably. Whatever. Those heart, those heart-shaped masks hanging all over the place are really weird looking. And yeah, it's a silver rupee. You're pretty happy. Oh, I'm not really, but sure. I've kind of, I kind of have mixed feelings about Twilight Princess, where uh, if you can't, if you can't fit the rupees in, you uh, and yeah, there's no, there's no skylight in here. So where did he jump from? He just kind of teleported, and then again, I guess he is a spirit, so it does make sense. Um. And yeah, here's this guy, blah blah blah. Fagballs is an amazing person. An amazing person, blah blah blah. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, um, I kind of have mixed feelings about how in Twilight Princess, if your wallet is full, you just put the rupees back in the chest and close it. Uh, on, the one, on the one hand, it's nice to see Nintendo finally address that after like a billion games that had that as a problem, but at the same time, it kind of just replaces one problem with another problem. Because if you're if you're looking for a key in a dungeon, then you end up having all sorts of chests that you can't get rid of because you have too much friggin' money. If you know what I mean. Because all the chests appear on the compass, like, with equal relevance, so... It's a bit annoying, but... Either way, we finally have 19 hearts. And, um... In the next part, we can finally start heading off to the next area of the game. The final area of the game. And probably my favorite final boss of any Zelda game. Though I gotta say, as easy as the Twilight Princess final boss is, he was pretty cool, actually. So, still, I think this one's a little bit cooler. You're just gonna have to judge for yourself. I'll see you in part 156. I mean 26.